The news at 5.30 starts right now. We begin with a double murder at an apartment complex near the medical center, which happened today just after noon. That investigation just getting underway this evening. John Paul Barajas live at the scene with the preliminary information the police chief was able to provide. What do we know so far? Tim, Courtney, we're at the Colonnade Apartment Complex off Parksdale Drive and the I-10 Frontage Road. And what we know is two people were shot and killed. They were both in their 40s or 50s. The suspect is in his 20s and he is in custody. Chief uh, William McMahon is telling us at this time, it looks like those victims might have been the suspect's parents. Now, he doesn't know what the issue might have started from or if there is any history of family violence at this point. He explained around 12.15, an officer was making a traffic stop in the area, heard the gunshots and made his way to the complex. When he arrived, he saw the two bodies on the ground and then noticed a man with a shotgun and an AR. He ducked between two vehicles. Uh, the officer backed off a little bit. Guy popped up, officer fired a few rounds at him. Uh, none of them took effect. At that point, he gave up. Uh, he's now in custody. To clarify, none of the officer's shots hit the suspect, and he will not be on leave. Chief McManus believes that officer was following protocol. Now back live out here, the scene has cleared and things have quieted down, but the residents here are still scared and rattled. We'll hear from some of them tonight at 10, as well as bring you the latest on this investigation. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Well, today, the Islamic Center for San Antonio received an $80,000 pledge, increasing that reward for information leading to Lena Kill's return. Their total combined with the Crime Stoppers reward is now a quarter of a million dollars. Just two months ago, little Lena disappeared from her family's apartment complex. Today is her fourth birthday and a grim observance was held. Our Lee Waldman is at the Villa de Cabo Apartments and Lee, it's a somber birthday today. It looks like any four year old's birthday, balloons and cake. Unfortunately, the girl of the hour is still not here. Lena's birthday observance started with a prayer we've heard many times over the past 62 days. Bring Lena home. Today, her father pledging never to give up until his little girl is home. Lena's face on display on a poster with a number for San Antonio Police Department. Rias Kiel, Lena's father, releasing four doves today in her honor. Speaking through a translator, he says his family is suffering. So he said that uh, it's been two months since Lena is last. In the meantime, today is her fourth anniversary. Uh, you know, it's very painful. My pain is increasing. The message over the past two months has remained the same. If you see anything, you need to call in those tips. Lena's father and others here saying they won't give up until Lena is home. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. One man fatally shot, another in stable condition after a shooting downtown. It all happened just after 2 o'clock this morning outside a bar on St. Mary's in East Russell Street. Police say a woman was leaving the bar and just returned to her vehicle when a man came up to her. That man allegedly tried coming on to her and she refused. That's when he allegedly pulled out a gun and shot a fly around into the air. Uh, two men rushed at him and both ended up getting shot. One of the men died on the way to the hospital. The other in stable condition tonight. That suspect was taken into custody. A man's in critical condition after his pickup truck rolled over this morning. It happened on the south side just after four this morning on I-35. Police say the man in the truck hit a guardrail before hitting a concrete wall. It continued rolling, throwing the man from the truck. Police say he was not wearing a seatbelt. The truck finally came to a stop once it hit another car stalled on the highway. The man remains in critical condition and alcohol is suspected to be a factor in the crash. City officials issuing a boil water notice for the city of Castroville earlier today. This due to a water main break at Fiorella in London, causing the city's water pressure to drop below 20 PSI. All customers there urged to boil water before consumption, which includes drinking, brushing teeth, washing hands, and etc. When the boil water notice is discontinued, city officials say they will notify customers, but you can also keep up to date with all the latest on that notice by visiting our website at ksat.com. Still ahead on the news at 530, Russia says they have no plans to attack Ukraine, but the White House believes otherwise. Reasons why President Biden says it is obvious they do plan to invade. Primates play a critical part in new research discoveries that happen right here in San Antonio. The story after the break.
There are nearly 1,000 baboons living on San Antonio's west side. It's just one of the species involved in research, the Texas Biomed Campus. The KSAT Explains team wanted to know more, so that's the focus of the new episode, which debuts this week. Here's Myra Arthur with a preview. It is hardly a typical South Texas scene, but San Antonio is home to thousands of primates, and they live here at the Southwest National Primate Research Center. Almost all of the major breakthroughs in human health have come through animal testing and through primate testing. Animals are a key part of scientific research, leading to the development of some life-saving medical treatments, including for COVID-19. But before the human trials, you have to make sure something's safe. But using animals in this way is often the subject of ethical debate and passionate criticism. When we talk about animal research, it's uh, for some, a difficult topic. Advancements in science being studied right now could provide alternatives. People have been working extensively on these uh, so-called organ chip devices. We're creating parts of the organs. In this episode of KSAT Explains, we're giving you a glimpse of the animal research done right here in the Alamo City and the role that played in creating the COVID-19 vaccine. Plus, we're also introducing you to the science that some hope could replace the need for animal testing in the future. KSAT Explains Animal Research will debut in a live stream Tuesday night at 7. You can check it out on KSAT.com or the KSAT Facebook page. Then after that, the full episode will be available to stream on demand at KSAT.com slash explains. Lower level Russian tactical commanders have been given orders to invade Ukraine. U.S. officials tell ABC News the news is consistent with statements previously made by President Biden and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who have said they believe U.S. intelligence indicates Vladimir Putin has made his decision to invade Ukraine. Here's ABC's Aaron Katursky with the latest. In Ukraine's restive east, more worrying signs Russia has no plans to back down. Russia-controlled rebels made new and unsubstantiated claims of coming under threat from Ukraine. The U.S. and its allies believe they're lies, so Russian President Putin can justify an invasion. He's been very deliberate in terms of assembling the right kind of combat and combat support capabilities. The kinds of things that you would need uh, to conduct a successful uh, invasion. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told ABC News Russia amassed enough firepower to take the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. If he employs that kind of combat power, it will certainly create uh, enormous casualties uh, you know, within a civilian population. Russia has denied plans to invade, but after test firing nuclear capable ballistic missiles, Russia extended military drills in Belarus instead of withdrawing its forces as planned, raising fears of an imminent invasion. Leaving a security conference in Germany, Vice President Harris said there is still hope for a diplomatic solution. We are looking at a moment that is a very decisive moment. We are talking about the real possibility of war in Europe. Today, French President Macron tried by phone to dissuade Putin from an attack. But according to the Kremlin, Putin expressed serious concern about a deterioration in eastern Ukraine and blamed Ukraine for it. We still hope and wish that President Putin would make the decision to take the diplomatic path. President Biden meeting with his national security team on the deteriorating situation. Diplomacy is the hope, but the U.S. believes war is the reality. As Secretary of State Blinken put it today, everything we are seeing suggests that we are on the brink of an invasion. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, Lviv. Outside the live cam as we wrap up the weekend. Well, as expected, more clouds around today, but it certainly hasn't been an unpleasant day. Our temperature at the airport sitting near 70 and a few spots down to the southwest. We're a little bit closer to 80 today. We'll look at your current temperatures and what you can expect for the week ahead coming up very shortly. First, the aquifer today, no change in its level, holding steady at 665 even. And in your Sunday pollen count, molds, elm, and mulberry are all low as we wrap up the weekend. We'll be right back. At least we had a weekend full of nice weather before what's coming comes this week. Yeah. This? Yeah. <laughs> a lot, a lot, of, lot of dips. A lot of that. Yes, you are going to want to 
be aware of the weather forecast heading into this week because more changes are on the horizon today. Biggest change, some additional cloud cover. No rain falling out of these clouds, though, and this is mainly some mid and high level clouds. We'll see low clouds build in overnight, and those are expected to produce some drizzle by early tomorrow morning. 79 in Catula, so a bit warmer down to the south and west. That was expected. 71 here at the airport, also 71 New Braunfels, some 60s across the hill country, a comfortable day. Our winds are southerly and they've been a bit breezy today, about 10 to 20 miles per hour, and we've still got a decent breeze going right now. The south winds have been steadily increasing our dew point numbers today. But even right now, our dew points in the 50s and 40s, that's really not feeling too bad. So you may have noticed if you watched yesterday and you knew it was going to be a bit more humid today. You may have noticed just a little more humidity in the air, but it's still been very comfortable. But look, compared to this time yesterday, our dew point numbers here in San Antonio are up 30 degrees. So moisture has been building in and it's going to be a lot more noticeable by tomorrow morning. So I know we've got some kiddos off from school tomorrow. Maybe you're off of work, but if you've got to make your Monday commute, here's what you can expect in the morning. Temperatures in the low 60s with low clouds, fog, drizzle, muggy, not the prettiest start to the day. But by the time you're heading home in the afternoon, all of that will have cleared up. We'll be mostly sunny and warm with afternoon highs tomorrow jumping into the 80s. So after a lot of clouds in the morning by tomorrow afternoon, I expect a lot of clearing and that is going to help to warm us up 80s and even a few 90s on the board. I think we'll see the 90s pop up south and west of San Antonio by Tuesday afternoon as our next cold front is dropping into North Texas. So Monday, Tuesday, unseasonably warm days for us here, and then that all changes on Wednesday. We expect our next strong cold front to move through early on Wednesday, and this will send our temperatures tumbling. Check it out. 82 tomorrow, mid to upper 80s on Tuesday. Again, with some low 90s on the board Tuesday afternoon, especially south and west of San Antonio, and a drastic change through the middle and back half of the week. A morning temperature around 60 on Wednesday. Notice our afternoon temperatures in the mid 40s. So Wednesday appears to be one of those days where temperatures will fall during the day. And then because we'll be stuck under clouds for the remainder of the week, it is going to be very difficult for us to warm up Thursday and Friday. So that's why we keep our temperatures in the upper 40s and low 50s to end the week. So with it getting this cold, the obvious question is, well, what about precipitation? Let me show you what we're working with here. I'll go ahead and tell you we're not looking at a lot of precipitation for us here in South Central Texas, but there will be a better chance to see some frozen precipitation in Central and North Texas. This is Wednesday night into Thursday. Thursday morning and this is still several days out for us to really start to comb into this data as we get closer to Wednesday and Thursday. But I just wanted to point out uh, that any precipitation that could be frozen or wintry is likely to be hill country and points north. So if you're in the hill country, we're going to keep a close eye on this for you in the days ahead. But any concerns for wintry weather that could cause issues this week, that is going to be up central and then mainly north Texas up closer to the I-20 corridor. Nonetheless, we will keep you updated in the days ahead, but this really just looks like a cold spell for us heading into the middle and back half of this week. So for your President's Day, starting off gray and humid, clearing into the afternoon, very warm tomorrow, very warm Tuesday, and then turning colder for the middle and back half of this week. Low in chances of rain here, but mainly just gray and cold, guys. All right, thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Except for Monday and Tuesday, the weather's probably very similar in Cleveland, Ohio, <laughs> where the All-Star Game's happening. Yeah, and that's going down tonight, and Spurs point guard DeJounte Murray cannot wait to get out there. And you know what? The game's all about a lot of scoring and really not much defense. Well, he says he plans to bring the D tonight. And a high school wrestler born with no legs goes on to win a state championship. This is an amazing story coming up. I'm always thankful and grateful because I wouldn't be here without God and just being a good person. So I'm always preach that in my hard work. And I just want to keep going. I'm motivated. This is fun. You know what I mean? Being around the guys like if you, if you don't get motivated from this, I don't know what to tell you. DeJounte will put that motivation to work tonight in the NBA All-Star Game in Big Board Sports.
First point guard DeJounte Murray is ready to suit up and play in the NBA All-Star game tonight. He is a reserve for Team Durant, replacing the injured Draymond Green. 25-year-old Murray leads the NBA in steals per game and ranks fourth in assists per game and 26 in rebounds per contest. His 10 triple-doubles are the second most in the NBA and a single-season record for a Spurs player. The NBA TV crew asked him about his expectations for tonight. I'm from Seattle, Washington. We, we built for these games, like, this is what we do. Yeah. In the summer, in open gyms or Jamal's pro am like, yep. so when I get my opportunity, I'm going to go out and impress the fans, you know? I'm going to play hard. I'm playing defense. I'm going to share the ball. I'm going to try to get some buckets. I'm going to enjoy it all. I like, yeah. that. I like yeah. that. You don't hear yeah. that often. Not, not everybody often. takes that approach. Uh, nah, I'm, I'm enjoying the moment. I'm going to stay true to who I am. Staying true to himself has helped DJ ascend to one of the top point guards in the NBA. He can score and play defense at an extremely high level. Former Spur Patty Mills is not surprised Murray is an all-star. Being with him, um, you know, since the beginning of, of his career and, and seeing the potential, um, seeing the work ethic, um, seeing the adversity that he, he's faced, um, you know, in... in in his life, um, not only on the basketball court with his injury and seeing how um, his approach to, to, to those sort of things, um, a, a true competitor, always trying to find a way to, to get better. So, you know, in my eyes, there was never any doubt that he'll, he will become an all-star um, and he, he thoroughly deserves it this year. And, um, you know, it, it's been fun for me to, to watch. Um, you know, not as a teammate anymore, but, but as a fan from afar, um, it, it's been really enjoyable. Speaking of enjoyable, the Spurs posted this awesome moment from All-Star Saturday night. David Robinson congratulating Murray courtside. Then in another clip, DJ told his daughter that Robinson played for dad's team a long time ago, and the Admiral told her, your dad is breaking all my records. That's pretty cute. 71st NBA All-Star game goes down tonight at 7 in Cleveland. In men's college basketball, Michigan head coach Jawan Howard ignited a brawl during the postgame handshake. Wisconsin head coach Greg Gard stopped Howard, and the two had words. Now it appeared Howard was already talking before guards stopped him. Players and coaches stepped in and then Howard swiped at a Wisconsin assistant coach, smacking him on the side of his face while players from both teams would start the brawl. Howard said he was unhappy about Wisconsin's timeout usage. Wisconsin called two timeouts in the last minute, including one with 15 seconds left in the game when the Badgers led by 15. The Big Ten said it would review the matter for swift and appropriate disciplinary action. Today, the Arkansas women's basketball team honored fifth-year senior Amber Ramirez, the only senior on the squad. The Wagner High School great led the Hogs with 18 points, but Kentucky won 78 to 55. And here's a picture with Amber, her mother Melissa, father Mike, and her two sisters, Amy and Ashley. More than 8,000 packed Bud Walton Arena to celebrate Amber. Yesterday evening, Clark Sr. Lane Stallworth ended his high school career on the podium at the Class 6A State Swimming and Diving Championships. Lane took second in the one-meter diving competition, missing out on gold by a little under one and a half points. He also helped anchor the Cougars' 200-yard medley relay to a seventh-place finish. But competing at state is nothing new for the Stallworth family. There's been at least one Stallworth competing at the state level in each of the last four years, including Lane's brother Jackson, who found his way on the podium last year. It feels amazing to, you know, get a carry it on. My brother got, you know, a third in the 100 fly last year and being able to get second this year and just like, you know, bring, a, bring another medal home. I'm so happy I can do that. Lane will join Jackson on the Arizona State swimming and diving team next year. The greater San Antonio area is welcoming back two state wrestling champions. Smithson Valley senior Sage Binka completed an undefeated season by defeating Prosper's Megan Flaherty via pin in the 148-pound division. She's the first Rangers wrestler to win a state title. And New Braunfels junior Landon Marsh matched his older brother George by winning the 182-pound division via pin late in the third period. He becomes the second unicorn to win a state title. And we end with the slogan, anything is possible. Adonis Lattimore, a Virginia high school senior who was born with no right leg and a left leg that ends at the middle of his thigh, took home a state wrestling championship Saturday. He won the Virginia High School League Class 6, 106 pound weight class. His head coach, James Sanderlin, right there jumping up and down, was cheering wildly while the crowd roared its approval during the final seconds of Lattimore as he defeated his opponent. His coach was the first one on the mat right there to give the young man a hug. I'll tell you what, how awesome, awesome 
is that. He's got a heck of a hype man there. He does. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. That's all of our time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here on the Night Beat.